Hello and welcome to the first of a two-part demonstration that aims to highlight the scale and the implications of the changes that have been made to vector creation and editing in version 9 of the Vectrix software. And that applies from Cut 2D Desktop all the way through to our premium product Aspire. Now the best way to show those differences is to use a like-for-like -like demonstration of 8.5 versus version 9 using a representative model. In this case, we're going to be using a variant on the Vectric widget, which you may well know. And we'll be looking um, at the time taken to create this design, the number of cursor clicks, the number of form entries, and the overall workflow to go from a blank script through to the end result. So I'll start by popping back into the software. And um, this, in this case, it's a 10 by 10 workpiece with the zero in the lower left hand corner. I'm just going to raise the stopwatch now because we're going to record this from start to finish. And I'm going to press start and then start creating some geometry. So straight into the polyline tool now. And I'm going to start with a position at 5.5 and 8, so the first absolute point. And then I'm going to go, uh, as you can see there, and then a distance in x by 2.5. And then down by negative 1 in y. But I need to make sure I zero out the x. And then I'm going to create the first of the recesses, so it's going to be minus 0.5 in x, 0 in y. And then downwards by minus 1 in y and 0 in x. Back out to be flush with the edge, so 0.5 and 0. Down now to the next recess, so I'm going to go down in y by minus 3. And then back in by negative 0.5 in x down it by 1 and then back out by 0.5 to the flush flush with the edge and then down by minus 1 in y and then along in negative x by minus 7 so you have to be aware of your positives and negatives here when doing relative and then back up by a distance of positive 3.5 in y and then I now need to create a, 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 an angled line, so 38 degrees at 1.5, and then a distance in Y by 1.5, and then close that up to the start. Now, as it turns out, I've purposely built in a couple of mistakes here, so I need to select that. You can see it's one single piece. Go into the node editing mode with N on the keyboard, and I'm going to right mouse key hovering over that node there, properties, and I need to move this relative to its current position, back in negative by minus 1 in x. Similarly, I need to move this segment inwards by 0.5. So I need to cut the vector at the two data points. So I'm going to use the keyboard C command to uh, hovering over those points. And now you can see that is a separate single vector, which I now need to move inwards relative uh, by 0.5. And I now need to trim this all back up. So I'm going to go into the extend vector tool and select the vector I want to extend and select the vector I want to extend to and similarly again and then just close out the form and use the scissor command just to lop off the two ends so I'm happy with that it's a single vector now so now I can go ahead and uh, create some of the fillets which I'm going to add to all corners except the recess so I'm just going to hover over the corner and apply those fillets and close out that form. I now need to add three small circles to the corners. So in this case, they're gonna be a 0.3 uh, diameter and I'm gonna just need to hover over. Sometimes it's a little tricky to... There we go. So sometimes it can be a little bit tricky to, to find those corners and sometimes a little easier. I now need to find the midpoint between these two lines here because I want to put one just right in the middle there, but I can't do that. Uh, so I need to create some construction geometry from the edge of the polylines here, and then come back to the circle creation tool and just pop that back in. Now there it is, picked up the midpoint, close out the form, delete the construction line. Now as it turns out, I need to increase these circles back up from 0.3 to 0.5. So to do that, I need to select it now, come back to the form and change the diameter to be 0.5. And I need to close the form, reselect, back to the form, 0.5. And then similarly back up to the last one and change that to 0.5. So 
the next stage, if we pop back to the PowerPoint, is to create these two levers here, essentially. Now, there are two circles with tangent lines running between those two. Now, if we had access to the Pro versions of our product, or Aspire, then we would have a gadget tool to be able to create those tangent lines. Um, if we imagine that we are using, for instance, the desktop product, then, of course, we don't have access to do that, in which case you would need to create some rather complicated construction geometry to be able to create those tangent lines. So this would add significant time to this demonstration to do. Now, what I'm going to do is cheat and eyeball it, eyeball it, but it will not be perfectly tangent. I would need to create the construction geometry you see on this sketch. So... We're going to pop back now and start by creating the, the two lar well, the, the large arc. So I need to create this at diameter 0.5 and it needs to be at an absolute position of 7 and 3. So I'm going to create that now and just zoom in and we need to create a line down 30 degrees um, by length of 1.5 inches. So I need to lock on to the, basically the 30 degrees and I'm just going to extend that out. And now copy the first, the large circle to the other end point. So select it, hit, hold control on my keyboard. I'm hovering over the mid center point. I'm just going to drag that across now with the left mouse key and locate on there. Whilst that's selected, I'm going to go back into the form now and reduce that diameter down to 0.25. And now I need to really eyeball some tangency. So I'm going to come into the small arc now and just pick somewhere where I think it's going to be roughly about tangent, which I think is there. And I'm going to come back up to the top arc and really somewhere about there. And then spacebar to come out of the command, back down to the bottom of the small arc and pick up the edge. And similarly across to the large to do the final tangency. So I'll just try and get this as best as I can be. And I'm now going to delete out the center line and we we'll now trim up this to be just the perimeter so we should be able to take out those segments um, but we can see here that it's not perfect so I would need to make further modifications and I now I'm going to copy this across to uh, the upper lever so uh, it's all one piece so I can select that now and I'm going to hit control C to copy it into the clipboard into the move command move that relative position uh, which is upwards in Y by 4. You can see that the second one created. Close out the form, Control V. We'll then copy that back into the clipboard, uh, back onto the screen. So the next stage and final bit is to create the lips, uh, which happens to be equidistance between the two edges here, the two perimeter edges, and also equidistance between uh, the imaginary bounding boxes around the sort of two levers. So in order to do that, um, it's a little tricky, but I'll try and do that with some, um, basically some of the guidelines. So I'm just going to pick a guideline for the extremity of the lever one and also for lever two. So, and then bring another one across to be on the edge. So I'm gonna, there we go. And then I'm going to create some a construction line between those two points. So I will then have the midpoint of what would be the gap between those two bounding boxes. Okay, I'm now going to create a, another construction line which will come from that midpoint. But of course I want to go out orthogonally here to where this would intersect with this line. So I'm actually not going to do that. I'm going to simply snap onto that line now and then come into the node editing mode. And I'm going to select the first point which I know has the correct Y value. Shift and select the second node and then hit Y on the keyboard to edit the Y value of the second point to be the same as the first. Now I'm going to come back into the extend command, pick the item I want to extend, and then extend back out to this uh, the right hand edge. And of course then I now have the midpoint. So I'm just going to delete some of the um, construction geometry that we've got. So I'll delete out these guides and delete out that line. And now I should be able to come back in now and place basically that, but I need to obviously edit that so I need to just whoops I need to come back into the vector and just change that to be width 3 and height 1 okay and then close out that delete the line and we have finished the job and stop okay so let's take a look at the statistics for version 8.5 the time taken was 8 minutes 47 seconds the number of cursor clicks was around about 320 
the number of forms we needed to use was 23, construction lines were 3, and the number of guidelines 3. Hello and welcome to the second of a two-part demonstration that aims to highlight the scale and implications of all the changes that have been made to vector creation and editing in version 9 of the Vectric software. This applies right from cut to g desktop through to our premium product, Aspire. The best way to show those differences is to do a like-for-like -like comparison between the two softwares. We've already seen version 8.5, so now let's take a look at version 9. The same workpiece 10x10 with our zero in the lower left-hand corner. And I'm going to use the stopwatch to record this from start to finish. I'm going to press start and now begin creating some geometry. So 5.5 um, and 8, so we'll start with an absolute position. And then I'm just going to use the smart cursor to go out by 2.5, down by 1, in by 0.5 down by 1, back out, down by 3, in by 0.5, down by 1, back out flash by 0.5, down by 1, across, along by 7, up by 3.5, back to the form because it happens to be easier for this particular part, 1.5 and add that and then back up by 1.5 and then close that out. Just like the V8.5 demo, I need to make some modifications to here. So I'm going to go into the node editing mode and just drag that along by the distance 1 rather than having to enter values. And I'm going to cut this vector like we did before to separate this particular segment here. And I'm going to move that now inwards by 0.5. So I just start dragging it inwards and then I can use the transform shortcuts or quick keys to hit 0.5 on the keyboard and that will move that inwards. And rather than using the limit and uh, trim command, I'm actually going to use this by using the smart cursor. So what's quite nice is I can pick go into the node editing mode, pick this up now, hover over that cursor, and I can use that to find out where that intersection is. So I can change that, and similarly with this one here, I could do the same likewise. And hey presto, and just move this point up to meet here, and this one. So you can use the smart cursor now to extend tangentially, really, without needing the form tool. So with that now, I'm just going to make sure that everything is fine with that and go ahead to create the fillet arcs in the corner. 0.5, so I'm going to hover over those corners now. I'm not going to do the recesses, just all the other edges. And following on from that, I'm now going to create the circles in these three corners. Okay, so this is going to be... And I'm just going to go down now. And what's quite nice is using the smart cursor is a lot easier for me to find where those center points are. It just is really, really easy now. And I can just sort of hover over that and immediately I can find that. I need to put one in the center here. But what's quite nice is I just hover over there, hover over that node. Hey, presto, there's the midpoint. So no need for the construction geometry. I want to close out of that now. But actually, I needed to make these three corner ones actually 0.5. So I can then select one, come back into the form as we did before, 0.5, and apply. But what I can do now is use the Shift key. And rather than closing the form down, I can just move to the next item and modify. And then the next item again and modify. And only when I finish do I have to close out the form. Now we need to move forward and create the, what are the two levers here, okay? And we've got a larger radius and a smaller radius. And if we remember back to 8.5, and if imagine I was using the desktop version, it would be virtually impossible for me to to create tangent lines without an awful lot of construction geometry. This is changed obviously with version 9. So I'm going to go into this radius, uh, the draw circle command, an absolute position of 7 and 3, and a radius, a diameter of 0.5. You can see there now, close out that form, going to create some construction geometry from the center point, just down by um, 30 degrees. So I'm going to lock onto what's 30 degrees orthogonally and then come out by 1.5 and then just pick that up and then just copy that across to that node and then just quickly change that down to 0.25. And now create some tangent lines between the two. Very simple to do. I simply click on anywhere really on that first arc. And then I'm going to use the T command on the keyboard. So I hover over the secondary one, hit T, tangent. I'm going to hit the space bar to come out, back down, select a point anywhere on there, come across the second arc, hit T. Hey presto, we've got two tangent lines. I can get rid of the center line. And then just trim out the other two pieces. And then I'm now going to copy that geometry to the clipboard. 
Okay, control C, and I'm going to move that now upwards relative by position by Y in four, for in f and then con close out the form and paste that back in. So we've got our copy there. And now finally, we want to add in the ellipse, which once again happens to be halfway between the bounding box that would be formed around the around the perimeter of the two levers and the distance between midway between the left hand and right hand edge of the outer vector. So this can be done a lot easier. I now need to make sure on my um, command on my smart snapping that I have object bounds switched on. Okay, so I'm simply now going to hover over and just pick out basically that point there, and then I can just hover over that and that'll pick out the um, point there. So we've got our line which happened would 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 be between the bounding box of those two items. So now what I want to do is I've got I've got a midpoint here so I know that I want to come off that midpoint inwards by here but I need to be halfway in between these two. So I can actually go straight to creating the ellipse here okay and we now need we now know that it needs to be basically using the bounding box of my um, outer vector which I've got and now I come across and I can pick up that midpoint uh, the mid the the line that represents the cent the the and then we're going to come down here and then meet basically our midpoint and then across there we have the point that we need and I'm now going to just basically edit that to be three and one okay and we have that complete I can delete out the single bit of construction geometry was needed and we've completed and I'm going to stop the clock. Okay, so let's take a look at the statistics for version 9. The time reduced down to 6 minutes 12 seconds. The number of cursor clicks was down to just around about 130. The number of forms used was 14. Construction lines reduced just to 1 and we didn't need to use any guidelines at all. In terms of a comparison between the two products, we went from 8 minutes 47 down to 6.12. That's a saving of 2 minutes 35 seconds, which represents a 30% saving. The number of cursor clicks was down from a large 320 down to a small 130, representing a huge 60% saving. The number of forms was 23 down to 14, a saving of 40%. The number of construction lines went from 3 down to just 1, and we didn't need to use any guidelines at all. So as you can see, by the addition of what's the, called the smart cursor or smart snapping, as well as the transform shortcuts, also called quick keys, that we're able to produce designs far quicker and in a much easier workflow from start to finish.